Hey everyone, it's Johnny, your independent Sensi consultant. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to talk about the June 2021 Bring Back My Bar Winners. So I actually have all of the bars here, all the bars, so many bars, all 25 of them, I believe. And these are available through the month of June to either add to your club, buy in massive quantities, or just sample out if you've never tried them before. Uh, and if you're not sure what Bring Back My Bar is, let me tell you. So basically, we have a whole bunch of fragrances in our catalog, but Sensi has made many, many fragrances through the years. And when they are discontinued, you're no longer able to either add them to your club or purchase them. So what Sensi allows us to do, both customers and consultants, uh, is twice a year to vote on our top bars to bring back out of the vault, if you will, uh, so that we can either add them to our clubs, buy them again, try things that we've never tried before, and see some of these awesome bars. So without further ado, there are 25 and I want to dive right in and give you like my first sniff impressions on these. There are a few that I think I have warmed in the past, but um, we'll see sometimes like if it's an older bar sometimes it might smell a little bit different or like the the scent changes over time it's not always the case but fragrance is very subjective and again it depends on how you store your bars and how old they are as well so that being said let's dive in i'm just going to randomly pick things and then at the end we'll kind of give you my top cold sniff picks uh that i really enjoyed and ones that maybe maybe I personally wouldn't be interested in, but those may be completely different from you because scent is a very personal thing. Uh, so some scents that I may just be head over heels about, you may just go bleh too, so, and vice versa, and that's okay. So here we go. Let's see what we got here. So first one I have on top here, and look at this box here, is Watermelon Patch Pink. Nice, lovely little shade of pink. And watermelon patch is described as sweet vine ripened watermelon. Simple and plain. So this is going to be like a sweet watermelon fruity scent. Here we go. Okay, so I definitely get watermelon. Yeah, do the little warm the back, wax little thing. That smells a little bit better. Okay, so I have a feeling that I'm going to enjoy this bar more on warm than I am particularly right out the gate on cold. You do get watermelon. It is it is very much a juicy, sweet watermelon. Now, is it authentic versus artificial fruity smell? It's, it's pretty spot on, honestly. At first, I was like, oh, this is like watermelon Jolly Rancher candy. And there's a tinge of it, which is, is not uncommon with fruity scents. Sometimes they can have a little bit of a cloying candy sweetness to them. But I'm, I'm guessing that that might, might mellow out a little bit and it might become more, more just straight up watermelon uh, when it's being warmed. But I don't, I don't dislike it. It's, I wouldn't say like I would run out and just like buy this in quantity right now, but I do like the smell of watermelon. I love the taste of watermelon, especially fresh ripe watermelon. So if this does kind of keep a more authentic watermelon vibe when it warms, I definitely think this would be a contender for a Sensi Club. But right out the gate, it is, it is watermelon. Cannot argue that. Next, I have pulled coffee tree, a nice brown wax. Let's figure out what this one is all about. Coffee Tree is described as bold and sophisticated. Wake up to the rich aroma of freshly roasted coffee beans. So it is hard for me to find a good coffee scent. Uh, either some of them smell too bitter or smell like vomit or smell like just an unpleasant caramel burnt something, like you just burned something in the toaster for too long. So um, there, there have been a few coffee scents that I've enjoyed, but... Let's see how this one fares. Oh man, straight out the gate, I just like got like a vision of Starbucks. Like when you walk in the door and it just smells like all the fresh roasts. <sighs> or there's this little place near me called the Conservatory for Coffee, Tea and Cocoa. Absolutely adore it. It's like a mom and pop sort of shop. Amazing, amazing, amazing coffee and tea and cocoa. Oh, this smells so good. So this is straight up like 
fresh roasted coffee grounds. You almost get more of the coffee sort of side of it, like the watery note on the bottom of the bar, like brewed coffee. But on the top of the bar, it was very much just like fresh roasted, like coffee grounds. Oh, but this is so nice. There's, it's not super bitter. It's like what I what akin to I would say if like you're you're not a coffee drinker but you love the smell of going into a coffee shop, this is kind of the vibe I would guess that you might lean towards. Like you love the scent of it, but you don't love the taste or flavor or whatever the coffee. Which is kind of like me sometimes, why I like cream and sugar in my coffee. Oh, but this is really nice. So I real I really hope this performs well, because if it does, then I will have found a coffee scent that I really enjoy. All right, moving on. We got 23 more to go. Lucky in Love is next. This is like a light pinkish purple color. And Lucky in Love is described as a sweet bouquet of mandarin, bergamot, and orange with hints of peaches and berries. Okay, so hints of peaches. That worries me a little bit because I'm not a big peach aficionado. Um, but mandarin, bergamot, orange. So I'm guessing like a citrus berry scent. Here we go. Oh yeah, definitely get the citrus and you definitely feel the bergamot in there. I don't know if I get much berry though on the top at least. Er, there's a berry note. Yeah, I get the berry. Um, it's almost like because there's so much citrus, there's like the mandarin, there's the bergamot, and there's the whatever the other one was, the just the orange. Um... It kind of gives you this very, um, almost n not biting of your nose, but like a very tart, crisp berry, like almost like a pomegranate sort of vibe, but far more citrusy. So I could, I could say that if you like something like sun-kissed citrus mixed with, um, perfectly pomegranate, something like that, that's the kind of vibe I'm getting right out the gate with this. Um, I like it. Uh, I'm not a huge citrus slash berry person. At least I'm happy that the peach isn't like a predominant player in this. At least I'm cold. Um, but I'm not like, it, it's not like, whoa, gotta have this and try it. It's more like I'm interested to see how this is going to perform. So that is Lucky in Love. Next we have Honeymoon Hideaway. I should have done this alphabetical order, but where's the fun in that? Um... This is described as escape to a secluded retreat of dew-kissed lily and tart sweet kiwi shaded by lush coconut palm. It's very dewy. Now this, interesting, so I've warmed this bar before, an older bar, and it didn't smell anything like this when I warmed it. So I don't know if that bar was just like, the oils had been sitting too long or it wasn't stored well or something but it didn't smell like this. And I actually do like what this smells like. So you do get a dewy sort of um, coconut vibe. So if you think of like the Bath and Body Works, like coconut palm or whatever it is, um, lotion or cream, it's not straight up coconut. It's more of that green with a hint of coconut vibe. It's very nice. It has that lush quality. I don't know if I get a whole lot of lily in this. Maybe that just adds to the dewiness. I, I don't know if I necessarily get a, a the floral note from it, but you do get that dewy, almost like aquatic feeling, like fresh out of the spa or out of the shower sort of vibe. Like that steamy sort of dewiness. Tart sweet kiwi. I don't know that I pick up kiwi either. I'm getting a whole lot of coconut palm and like a dewy aquatic vibe. Either way, this smells very different weirdly from what I thought this smelled like. And so now I'm really intrigued to see if I'm gonna like it now that I have a fresh bar of it to compare it with my previous schnoz experience with this scent. So that's Honeymoon Hideaway. So at least this time around, I'm kind of intrigued with this one. All right, next we have White Tea and Cactus. This is kind of like a pale sage sort of green and this is described as a clean crisp and refreshing floral mix with green notes 
So I'm a little leery on this because there was like a white, lavender white tea or something from the Threshold Target Wax Collection. And I was like, ooh, lavender and tea. And then it was like, carpet cleaner and soap. Um, so I'm a little concerned that this is gonna have a similar fragrance profile. Let's find out. Woo! All right, so you do get green tea. There is no doubt in my mind that there is green tea. I don't know if it's like a white green tea or a green white tea or a greenish white tea, but it is, there's a green tea, there's a tea note. You can undeniably get tea out of this. I don't know about the cactus note specifically. I guess that's just the green. There is a little bit of a perfumey vibe to this. Maybe I dare see even a little bit of a soapy vibe, which is not uncharacteristic of like tea scents or white and green tea scents from what I've experienced. It doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing, but it is have like this little bit of like a refined perfumey, soapy note. It's, it's like a fresh, clean sort of scent rather than necessarily super floral or super, um, super, I don't know, green lush yeah um i don't mind it it's not as soapy powdery as, as i was anticipating it might be so that's a good thing um but i don't know if it's necessarily my particular favorite out of this this ones that i've smelled so far it's okay it's okay. You do get like a little bit of a floral mix um, that it does air on the powdery side though. So if you're more of like a, I'm very much a uh, like fresh floral person, if you're kind of like that too, um, this might not be quite what you're looking for. But otherwise it smells pretty decent. All right, next we've got Wild Black Cherry. And that just remember, reminded me of the song like, uh, what is that? The horse and the black cherry tree. And she said, no, 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 no. I don't remember how that song goes, but that just came to my mind. This is actually described not as that, but a sweet and juicy black cherry, like an old fashioned black cherry soda. It's kind of like a faded sort of like um, reddish tone that's more deep in, in the actual container. All right, so here we go. Woo! All right, so that is cherry. There is, this is definitely a black cherry note. It's almost has a syrupy quality because it's so potent. Um, it's not, it's not tart. So keep that in mind. It is, I mean, they do say it's a sweet and juicy one. And it is very much that. It, um, I'm curious how this is going to perform. There's no fizzy note like in, um, what is it? Cherry lime soda or whatever we had that sent once upon a time. There's no fizzy quality to this. So even though it says like, like a soda, there's no fizz to this. There is a slight effervescent sort of like end air to it, like, but it's not like tingly, bubbly sort of sensation. Um, I'm always a little bit hesitant with cherry scents. Ooh, that is definitely deep black cherry because they can, over time, even if they start out nice, sometimes cherry scents turn very medicinal and remind me of like Triamenic or Robitussin. So I am curious, I mean, on cold, it lives up to its moniker. It's like almost just straight up white, wild black cherry. Yeah. But I am curious to see if this morphs or like over time becomes more medicinal rather than what it is, or if it becomes too syrupy and cloyingly sweet which can happen with like the cherry scents uh, that I've, at least in my personal experience. So, but it is, it is very much wild black cherry. I have a feeling it will be strong. Next we have strawberry swirl. Ugh. I'm not a big fan of strawberry scents. I just, I don't know what it is. I love eating strawberries, but strawberry scents. So this is blissfully sweet and creamy strawberry swirl whips uh, together frozen strawberry, frothy milk, and vanilla. So this is like a strawberries and cream. So like, if you like tangerine creamsicle, but strawberries, I bet this is what this is gonna be. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, that's totally what this is. It's strawberries and cream. 
It's like those um, strawberries and cream, like, hard candies with, like, that vanilla. It's, it's somewhat cloying. Not a fresh strawberry scent. Just, just throwing that out there. Also kind of reminds me of, like, a strawberries and cream milkshake. Yeah, uh, whew, that is very sweet. If you like very bakery sweet sort of smells, ooh, yeah. It almost has a strawberry shortcake vibe. I know there's not like supposed to be a bakery like dough note to this, but it almost, just almost slightly because of how it's mixed, it almost gives me a little bit of a strawberry shortcake vibe on cold. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is one that will be in my club. I will definitely warm it. Uh, but this may be a one and done for me. I think it's just too sweet. Um, but it, 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 it lives up to the scent notes, so I can't, can't be mad with that. Next, we have Spring Forward. This is, if sunshine had a scent, it would be this burst of Italian bergamot, raspberry jam, and cedar wood. That's not what I expected this to be. So we have like a limey citrus sort of bergamot set. Um, we have raspberry jam, interesting, and then cedar wood. I don't know if that's what I would describe sunshine as, but it's pink. Let's find out. I'm not mad about that. You do get the cedar wood. You know what this gives me vibes of? This gives me... You, I know what this smells like. This smells like a slightly sweeter a version of the Star Wars Dark Side of the Force. You know, because that one's like ginger and agar wood and lavender, I think, I want to say. And this one's cedar wood and, what did I just say? Bergamot and raspberry jam. So the bergamot is kind of like the substitute to the ginger in that bar. And instead of agar wood, you have cedar wood. Mm-hmm. And instead of like the lavender sort of floral musky cologne vibe, you have raspberry jam, which has a little bit of a mustiness to it because it's a jammy note, but it brings a little bit more of a sweetness with just a hint of like that raspberry tart bite. So this is to me like, I've done comparisons before, but if you like Dark Side of the Force, think of Dark Side of the Force as like the dark, the, the dark really, the nighttime version of the scent, you know, sultry, sexy, mysterious, evening. This is like rise and shine version of that. So this is like the morning afternoon. Or if you want to do it like in terms of seasons of Dark Side of the Force is more like the fall winter scent version. This is like that same uh, scenery and vibe, but in spring and summer. So it's very much I think if you liked Dark Side of the Force, you would, um, it would be worth trying a bar of this to give, see the vibe and give it a nice comparison. Now I'm actually curious, like I, I thought this was just gonna be like a straight up floral scent and it is so far from that. <laughs> um, but I'm pleasantly surprised with this. So this might actually be club worthy for me. All right, let's see, let's move on. That was enough on that one. Next we have the Mulberry Bush. Mulberry, Mulberry, Mulberry. Mulberry bush. Here we go. Sweet mulberry accented with bittersweet orange peels. So this is mulberry and orange peels. Ooh, this is good. This is a berry with a citrus, but it's more berry than citrus. Unlike the other one, which was like citrus land with a hint of berries, uh, lucky in love. This is like very much the mulberry Oh yeah, that's mulberry, all right. It's like a deep red, um, almost like a sun-kissed berry. So there's a sweetness to it, but it's not cloyingly sweet. So it's not like the strawberry swirl, like candy sweet. Um, and the orange peel actually enhances the berry scent. Like you end up getting the citrus note of the orange peel without it being like, oh my God, oranges. This is really nice. I am pleasantly surprised by this. I had no expectations and all around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. I think that's how the song goes. Um, so I'm gonna try this and I will let you know 
whether or not the monkey chased the weasel. Oh my gosh. That's actually, all right. So that's, that's top contenders. All right, all right. Here we go. Moving on. We've got oodles, oodles, not just some, but oodles of orange. And this is, kids will love this sweet citrusy scent punched up by fresh pineapple, crisp papaya, mango blossom, and ripe bunches of tropical berries. Yum. So wait, citrus, papaya, pineapple, mango, blossom, so floral note, and berries. Oh yeah, this is almost like Sunny Delight. <laughs> this is, ooh, ooh, there's like a little pungency there. It's a little bit too much for me. It's like if you just jumped into a vat of like the original Sunny Delight. Yeah, where it's like that tanginess. It's not like tang, the other like off Sunny Delight thing, but Sunny Delight for sure. But in wax form. Yeah, it's very, it's very much that citrusy, but not really authentic orange juice because it's like a mix of like other fruits. And then it has the berry note that gives it that like tart uh, punchiness. Yeah, straight up Sunny D. Straight up Sunny D to me. Oodles of orange. Not a vibe for me. I liked drinking it when I was a kid. I have since kind of moved on from Sunny Delight, but it was a delight. And I did drink it when it was sunny sometimes, so I don't know. Okay, watermelon mint, let's move on. This is probably just gonna be a chilled slice of sweet watermelon sprinkled with bracing fresh mint makes a refreshing summer treat. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. It is, it is fresh mint. It's not like a winter mint or like a spearmint or anything like that. It's, it's mint, but. <sighs> no, the mint almost overpowers the watermelon and gives it a bitter quality. And it's weird because I love watermelon mint drinks, but this does not is not reminiscent of any of those because the mint is almost overbearing on cold at least. And fresh mint can be a very strong fragrance uh, profile. And I think it's kind of almost overwhelming the watermelon. I almost, to the point where I'm like really trying hard and I know that I, there is a little bit of a watermelon scent but it's being overwhelmed by this fresh mint. So you just kind of get like a sweetness behind like the mint and it's a kind of weird combo. I'm I'm not particularly fond of this one. I think in, in concept it sounds really exciting, but in at least on cold sniff, it falls kind of short of what I think um, we were all kind of hoping it would be. <clears throat> all right, let's move on, shall we? Next one is Sweet Pea and Vanilla. And I've worn this before and I'm like, meh, take it or leave it. But let's see. So this is described as um, amb ambiance of raspberries and sweet pea petals with vanilla. I didn't know there was raspberries in this. Here we go, raspberries and sweet pea petals with vanilla. Well, what do you know? I smell the raspberries. Oh, you do get quite a bit of raspberry on the top here. You do get, and there is a lot of sweet pea though. So I am, I think it's more that I'm just not a huge fan of sweet pea. So when it becomes the forefront scent, it kind of loses its excitement for me. Ooh, but it smells good on the bottom here. Like you get more of the juicy, it's a juicy raspberry. Very juicy, love it. And then you get a little bit of the floral peeking through the sweet pea. And then I think the vanilla is just a rounding of the scent, like a vibe behind it is not necessarily distinctly, oh my God, vanilla in your face. Yeah, so when I wormed this before, I didn't get any raspberry out of it. So I'm really curious to see how this performs now because if this, if the raspberry note in this really kind of takes front and center for at least a while on it, I might actually put this in my club because it, 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 on cold it smells great. But uh, the remember what I remember was just like, it was like so much sweet pea and that was not a thing for me. So we'll find out. 
Has anyone warmed that one before? Can anyone like let me know what they've thought if they have? Is it more raspberry? Is it more sleepy? Will the world ever know? All right, next we have Ocean, which is cool and refreshing aquatic notes deepened with water lilies and ocean breezes. Now this one I got in washer whiffs and it was strong and I wasn't particularly fond of it. Let's see what it smells like in wax. Very similar, but different. I actually really like this. I was expecting this to be kind of like salty sea, sea salt air, or just, what is it called? Oh my goodness. One of the ones that we have that I can't remember that just basically smells like sea salt and like air freshener. But, so the bottom gives me a little bit more of the washer with vibe that I was not super wild about. It gives a little bit too much soapy quality to me. And I'm guessing, if I had to guess, the water lilies are gonna give that powdery note or that soapy note. But um, you do get a nice aquatic vibe to this. I do like that part of it. I think the ocean breezes, it's like a sea salty, think of like Febreze, but saltier. <laughs> it's, it's a nice scent, it's well mixed, it's very strong, I can already tell it's gonna be strong even in wax. Um, but I feel like the mix of the ocean breeze, salty sea air, whatever's going on, and then the water lilies is kind of giving it a soapy vibe, um, that is just a little bit too biting on my nose. Uh, we'll see how it mellows out when I warm it. But other than that, the scent is quite nice. I do like it as an aquatic scent, but again, it has that sort of nose biting quality that I'm like, eh. So we'll find out, we'll find out. All right, next we have My Wish. Ooh, ooh, I should have warmed up today before I even attempted to sing anything. Anyways, My Wish is not a Rascal Flat song, although it is. This is a confection of earthy fig, sweet violet, and playful marshmallow, which will have you wishing for more. Fig, violet, marshmallow. So violet's gonna be a little powdery, marshmallow sweet, and fig is gonna give a richness. And I was right. This is um, kind of sweet and cloying. Oh, hello, printer. Um, <sighs> Do I like this? You definitely get the marshmallow. You definitely get the violet. Do I get fig on this? A little bit. Fig isn't as strong in the scent as I was expecting it to be. I get a whole lot of like marshmallow vibe. And then I get the violet and then I get a bit of the fig, which is like more of a jammy note. Um, not gonna lie, I'm not as, uh, as excited as I thought I would be about this one. And that might change when I warm it, but at least I'm cold. It gives me a very powdery sweetness. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I feel like if there was more fig or if it was more tart, but that marshmallow is just like, woo! And it's not vanilla marshmallow, it's just straight up marshmallow. So it's just like sugary meets like powdery floral meets hint of fig which is also kind of sweet. Yeah, I was expecting this to be more like plummy in the sense, you know, like when you throw in like, I don't know, this is just very sweet. So on cold, I'm, it's not winning any words in my book, but you know, we'll see. I might be surprised when I warm it. Next we have Kahiko Kula. I almost said that wrong. And this is Say Aloha with exotic passion fruit, mango, and papaya. So very simple, passion fruit, mango, papaya. And I get all of those. I get the passion fruit, I definitely get the mango. Yeah, and there's a papaya note in there too. Um, it almost gives me pineapple vibes too. 
it's a very tropical fruity scent. Um, I don't mind it, but I don't think it's particularly um, standout compared to many of the other sort of fruity tropical scents that I've smelled in past from various brands. Like it just, it's nice. It's a nice summer fruity mix, but it's not like, oh my gosh, this is so unique and revolutionary. I think it's a very safe, fruity fragrance. So if you like like tropical fruit scents, you'll probably love this. Um, but I wouldn't say on the scale of one to 10, if 10 being like super unique, this is maybe like a three or a four. Like this is definitely a safe tropical fruit um, blend, but it's nonetheless, it's very nice. All right, next we have Rockin' Ruby Raz, which has shown up again. This, this scent just keeps coming back. Uh, so kids' birthday parties and punch bowls present pile, and presents piled high. This fruity blend of juicy orange, fresh strawberry, and sweet candy glaze is a child's best day all wrapped in one perfect fragrance. I feel like that's a, an, a slightly over-marketing story over this scent, but it is like a fruit punchy raspberry scent with a hint of citrus. It's great. It, it does have that fruit punch sort of vibe to it, but more of a raspberry note up front. It's sweet. It's what you'd expect that to be. Very, very bright, fruity citrus. It's basically, I mean, yeah, there's the raspberry in there, but it's basically a fruit punch scent. And it's sweet with a little bit of citrusy tartness. And it's great. It smells great. I enjoy it. I've had it in my club before. I ended up taking it out just because my club was out of control. Uh, will it go back in there? Maybe. Um, I like the scent. I really do. It performs well. It lasted all day for me and then some. But it's a fruit punch scent. And I feel like there are many different variants that maybe are not exactly like this one, but are close enough that I don't know that I necessarily need this in my personal club, but it is a great scent. So let's see, let's move on. Lemon Thyme Berry. I have never smelled this one before. Sparkling Lemonade and Strawberry. Ugh, strawberry again. Sprinkled with Crushed Thyme. Why are they all in capital letters? I don't know. It's like Sparkling Lemonade, ah! All right, so Sparkling Lemonade. So something like Be Fabulous maybe. Strawberry, eh, not be fabulous, and crushed thyme. So like a herbaceous sort of maybe slightly savory note. Oh, now this one I could get behind. So it does give me a like a reminiscent initial burst, kind of like be fabulous. It's a different scent, but if you like be fabulous, you'll probably really enjoy this one. It's not so much grapefruit musk and like that sort, but the, the, the lemon cello sparkling note in Be Fabulous very much reminds me of this sparkling lemonade vibe going on in here. It's a little bit more fruity, like berry note rather than citrus note like um, Be Fabulous is. And the thyme gives just a, another level of depth, kind of like the musk, the white musk gives a little bit of depth to be fabulous. It gives it a little bit of an herby, I don't wanna say earthiness because I don't want it to sound like this smells like dirt because that's not what I'm going for, but think of like a thyme or a rosemary sort of like in your garden, herb garden, that sort of scent profile. Um, but not overwhelming. It's like just enough to balance out the sweetness and the berry quality of the scent. I really like this. I'm pleasantly surprised. I think, again, I think if you liked something like Be Fabulous, this is in the same vein, but more berry rather than citrus, and you might enjoy this as well. Um, so I'm, I'm actually really excited to warm this now. Yeah, that's really good. I like that. Okay. Next, we have Jet Set Go. I'm so excited this came back. It's going in my club. I'm obsessed. This is Jet Off to a Balmy Tropical Paradise of Brazilian Orange, Jungle Papaya, and Island Vanilla. If you like Amazon Rain, you will probably love this scent. 
I feel like this is slightly less coconutty, um, creamy, but it still retains that vanilla sort of undertone from Amazon Rain. It still has that medley of fruit, but I also vaguely remember this being significantly stronger than Amazon Rain when I did warm it. Or at least in the same sort of strength category in terms of like the waxer. Now, if we're talking laundry bundle, Amazon Rain is a softer scent, strangely enough. But in wax form, it definitely powers through. And this kind of is that similar vibe. So if you like Amazon Rain, definitely suggest you check this out. Oh, it's so good. This is going in my club, without a doubt. You get a little bit of that citrusy sweetness in there from the orange, but it's not like straight up orange juice or high C. The papaya just kind of gives that, that like nice rounded fruity sort of tropical vibe, kind of like Amazon rain. Uh, there's no coconut, like I said earlier, no coconut milk vibe, but the vanilla in this kind of gives it that sort of um, creaminess and mellow quality. This is just an all round awesome scent. And I feel like for a lot of people, this wouldn't be a very offensive scent either. So um, if you're looking for something for like a bigger room or where you might entertain people, I don't think you could go wrong with this scent. I mean, again, everyone's scent profiles are different and what we like, but I would say that this would appeal to a wide audience pretty successfully. Oh my God, I'm so glad that's there. All right, we got five more. Hang in there with me. Hopefully my camera hasn't decided to like auto shut off like sometimes. All right, now we have Blue Hyacinth. This is Florals from Heaven, Pure Blue Hyacinth is all about the flower power. Now, I've worn this before, actually pretty recently, and it is straight up hyacinth. If you don't like the scent of hyacinths, which are a very strong and sometimes pungent floral, fresh floral, uh, you're not gonna like this bar because it's straight up hyacinth. Um, now, I, my grandmother used to have hyacinths right out of her dining room window, and it was interesting um, because we sometimes open the window, and if there was a breeze, it would waft the scent in. It's, it's their strong florals. Um, but this is a fresh blue hyacinth, and it, again, it is not for everyone. Hyacinth is a very strong floral, but this is not powdery. So if you love fresh florals, this may be worth trying. If you don't like hyacinth and you know what hyacinth smells like, just be forewarned. This is very much hyacinth straight up and it lasts. It lasts and lasts and lasts. For a floral scent, it lasts a whole long time, more than the day. And I love it. It reminds me of my grandmother's house. So it's going in my club. But I do know that some people are not fond of this scent, including some consultants. And that's okay. It, it is very much a you probably either like it or hate it sort of scent. Um, and that's fine. I like it. So, next we have Fresh Cut Daisies. I like daisies, so this might be good. A, a meadow, a wash, and summer blooms, okay? Freshly cut grass, grass, oh goody, and clover with Davy, daisies, buttercups, and ivy. Oh no, ivy. All right, this might be not as what I hoped it would be. So let's let's smell and then we'll talk. Ooh. Mm -mm. I mean, they're not wrong in the scent notes, that's for sure. This is very great. Oh. Ooh. All right, so this is like soapy grass uh, and ivy. This is like a soap um, with maybe a hint of daisy in the background that just gets drowned out by the ivy and the fresh cut grass. Uh, and what is that, clover? It's very, it's very green. It's like basically a field um, where there might be daisies in there, but we're not sure. But in the meantime, it's like you shoved your your nose into some freshly cut grass where there's like a bunch of clover sitting there. Uh, also, there's the ivy note to this and fun little side story. So I love inhale, exhale. Aloe vera and ivy, and that one's like a kiwi, solar driftwood, citrusy, whatever scent. Aloe vera and ivy came out as a scent of the month. It's in our catalog. I know some people love it. I loved it at first. It's like basically, as I described in many a time, the watermelon ivy version 
of Inhale, Exhale. I loved it, and then after like the third bar of warming it, I absolutely started getting like nauseous when I'd warm it. And it wasn't the watermelony note, it was the ivy note. I don't know what it was, I don't know if it brought back like bad memories from childhood, you know, whatever. The ivy just didn't do something for me. And so to the point where fortunately I had a customer who was like looking for extra bars of it on stock and I was gladly able to um, <laughs> send those off with her. But uh, that is a scent that I am kind of over completely. Like I have to either be in a very specific mood to enjoy it, otherwise it just kind of makes me queasy, which is very strange. Cause that's rarely a case with any sort of scents, even ones I don't like. Um, this is worrying me because I do smell a little bit of ivy in this. Um, it also kind of reminds me of like something such as Lush Gardenia, where it's very powdery and green and soapy. I think if you like Lush Gardenia, you'd probably really enjoy this scent. Um, if you don't like powdery or soapy florals, steer clear of this one. If you don't like grass scents, like if you hated freshly cut grass or um, the NFL Gridiron Rush that has a grass scent to it, don't pick this one up. You will definitely smell it. You will definitely not be happy about it. Yeah, it's, it's very... It's almost more like just a field of clovers and grass and soap and maybe some flowers hidden in there um, and some ivy. Not what I expected. If you liked Beach Daisy and you were thinking like me, oh, this is gonna be like Beach Daisy, I'm gonna love it. No, not at all. Not the same vibe. Do not pass go, do not buy this bar. Anyways, it is a scent, it is a vibe, it is very soapy, green and Hey, it would be a good bathroom scent. I'll say that much. Maybe that's where I'll try it. All right, moving on. Three more. We got this, guys. Love Story. Not the Taylor Swift version, just so that we're all clear. But, you know, if you have some Swifty fanatics, go onto my website and buy a couple bars for them. They might be super excited. Um, this is described as innocent pink jasmine and sensual amber embraced by luscious dark chocolate. I was good until we got to the dark chocolate. No, let's see what it smells like. I get jasmine and I get amber right out the gate, which is great. It smells phenomenal. Very romantic sort of scent. I mean, hence the name Love Story. <laughs> Maybe a little perfumey, but not overly so. And you know what? There, There is a depth that like a richness that this dark chocolate is bringing, but it's not like cocoa. And it's not, it's not a forerunning scent. It's almost like a, a base note that's really deepening and richening out the otherwise perfumey sweetness of the amber uh, jasmine combo. Now, because this is a pink jasmine, I think it's gonna be a lot less uh, pungent than traditional white jasmine that we're all commonly, you know, used to. So if you're worried that it's gonna be too overwhelmingly jasmine, it's not. It's more of a, a more muted version of that floral. And it's sweet and rich and I kind of want to eat this bar. And if this was like a perf, I could see this being a perfume. I could see this even being, honestly, I could see this being a unisex sort of perfume cologne. Because the dark chocolate note in it kind of gives it a, a richness, almost a hint of a cologne vibe and mellows out the otherwise floral quality. And amber is just such a nice neutral scent. It's kind of like musk. Musk can kind of go both for female or male based scent. Ooh, this is so good. I almost, and it almost has like a, a berry-ish quality to it too. So maybe that's why I want to eat it. But it's really good and it's probably going to go in my club, at least based on cold sniff. We will see. Hopefully it's not like a dud when I warm it. Last two, we have Palo Santo which I've smelled a bunch of the variants on this smell, and I do like Palo Santo smells. This is described as charred cedar bark and teak are the ultimate dreamboat blend. All right. It smells like Palo Santo. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, it's a little bit more smoky than some of the other um, vendor wax variants of this that I've smelled before. 
but it's also, I think, more true to just straight up Palo Santo rather than um, some of the other vendor wax creative blends that might add a berry note or something else because that's not really part of the original incense woody quality from what I, I've, I've kind of gathered. Not that I'm like a Palo Santo expert by any means, but... Um, if you like scents, woodsy, this almost gives me a little bit of a like a campfire-y sort of smell. So if you're missing a scent like around the campfire, although that's a little bit more like sweet, um, sweet smoky, you might, might actually be, it might be worth trying a bar of this. It's not going to be the same, and you may not like that whole, like, charred, incense -y vibe. But I feel like if you like uh, an around the campfire or, or maybe even, like, a bonfire beach smell, it might not be bad to try this scent. Yeah. It's very unique, uh, in, in from what I've remembered, like, this scent is distinctly different. Like when you have a Palo Santo note, you can tell it's generally there relative to something like cedar or um, mahogany or teak. All of the different woody scents kind of have a different vibe. And this one is very distinguished. And, and they, I would say that they do pretty decent on giving that vibe. I feel like it is, like I said earlier, a little bit smokier than I was expecting. Um, but I'm not mad about it, and I do like it, so we'll see how it performs warm and whether or not this might go in my club. But it, at least right now, it's strongly leaning towards that. All right, and our last scent is French Kiss. This is a Sweet Fig, tenderly caressed by coconut pulp, exotic cedar, and caramel. I love coconut-based things, cedar, and while well, fig is generally a good scent, caramel, uh, we'll see. So, let's find out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is a romantic. You do get the fig in this one, unlike my wish where I was like, where's the fig? Fig who? Uh, you do get that coconut um, creaminess, which is great. I just, I love that sort of note when it's brought in. It gives it a, a depth and a richness. There is a woody note. Um, I don't know if I would have right out the bat, at least on the top of the bar, been like, oh, that's cedar, but there's definitely a woody note. Maybe it's because it's an exotic cedar note. It's not like you're, what you we assume like a cedar chest might smell like, but there's a woody note in here. Mm. And I don't know if I necessarily get a caramel, like I, I, I don't think bakery when I smell this or gourmand there's a sweetness, but it's almost like it melds with the other scents to give like a buttery richness and continuation of um, like the coconut pulp vibe. It almost, it's like almost if like a leather scent was sweet rather than leathery, it's almost kind of like that. It's like the, the, this is going to be a terrible description, but like the feminine version of a leather scent. Like there's a deep richness to this, but it's berry, um, slightly tart, but mostly rich, creamy. And I guess you do get a little hint of the buttery caramel note um, that's kind of acting to enhance maybe the, the cedar note and the base notes of this fragrance. But it's not like straight up caramel. So, and I'm not a big caramel, caramel person to begin with. So I really like this. This is pleasantly surprising. Um, and this may be a club one for me. So if you like those kind of sultry, romantic kind of scents, uh, if you might you might want to try this one. It's, it's quite nice. All right, so in summary, oh no, there's two more. There's two more. They ran away. Just kidding. We have Candy Crave, ha, <laughs> can't forget this one. Just the sweet stuff, raspberry sorbet, cotton candy, and fluffy marshmallow. And it's a sweet, uh, yeah, you get the, the sorbet. 
It's, it's, oh, I want to eat this. Cotton candy. There's like a, a fluffiness or a sugary note to it. But it's not cloying, which is interesting for a sugary based scent. And then the fluffy marshmallows. So it is a sweet scent. But it's not like a hard candy or cloyingly sweet to me. It's a softer scent too. I think the marshmallow mellows it out. Not to play on words there. And the raspberry sorbet is there, but it's like... There's almost like a perfumey quality to this. I know that we had this in the um, body care line for a while. I'm not sure if it's still there anymore, but... I really liked it there, so I'm curious to see how it warms as an actual bar. So I think I'm gonna like this. It is a lighter sort of scent I'm getting from it, but that might actually work in its favor so it doesn't become overwhelming. All right, and the last, actual last one is Summer Soleil, or Soleil, however you wanna pronounce it. Pineapple and coconut milk top fluffy vanilla marshmallow. I do get the pineapple coconut milk and then like a weird sweetness. It almost gives me a cantaloupe vibe, which I know apparently that there's not according to this description, but I guess it's the mix of the pineapple coconut milk and then the marshmallow, but it, it gives me some sort of like cantaloupe vibe. <laughs> I, I don't know how to else to explain it. It's not cantaloupe. It doesn't smell like a rock melon. It's not like strawberry and rock melon where I wanted to like run out of the house screaming because it was just not for me, but it's not, weirdly enough, based on the scent profile, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna love this smell. And it's just okay. Like, I don't know that I hate it, but I also don't think I'm particularly fond of it either. I feel like the pineapple's throwing it off a bit. Or the ratio of the three of them is in a strange combination. I don't know, maybe it's the marshmallow part that's throwing it off. Because usually like when you have, it, it's, it's, I don't know. Because like we have that pineapple coconut vanilla scent and body care and I like that. And this is almost based on the scent notes, very similar, pineapple, coconut milk, fluffy vanilla marshmallow. It's like the marshmallow note. Maybe that's throwing it off. I don't know. Or maybe it's a different type of pineapple because it doesn't smell quite as like sweet. Maybe it's like more of a tart pineapple or like a slightly under ripened pineapple. I don't know. I don't know. I, I like it, but I don't really, I don't know if I'd go out of my way to be like, woo, summer soleil. All right. So now we're actually at the end of this. Let me round up the ones that I am particularly excited to either club or hopefully put in my club because they'll be awesome. But we'll never know. So Jet Set Go, definite. Yes, for me. Blue Hyacinth, super excited for that. Um, if it works out, Coffee Tree. Um, very interested in seeing how Love Story and Spring Forward work out. Uh, what else? Candy Crave to compare it to what I think I enjoy with it and see if I still do. Um, Mulberry Bush, pleasantly surprised. Lemon Time Berry, like a be fabulous distant cousin. I'm not mad about that. Um, French Kiss, very sultry. Goes along the lines of some of those other like romantic equality scents. Palo Santo, good old Palo Santo. And... Yeah, I think those are my top ones. They're, I, I'm curious about the other ones, but they're all kind of tentative in my mind. We'll see how, how, like, how they do when they perform. Um, my goal is to get through as many of these and try them as I can, but I am also going to be jet setting a little bit this month as well to check in with my folks again. So while I'll be posting videos, it may be a little sporadic um, and same with warming. So maybe I can throw cubes of each of these with me and hope they don't melt and then try them all. But 
In the meantime, those are my first sniffs. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you've tried any of these, let me know what you think about them and how they perform and which ones you're excited to see. And as always, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you are new here, consider subscribing to tune in to future videos from me. Hope you all are having a wonderful day and I will see you later. Bye guys.